That's a very ancient theme for this religion. It's at least 3,000 years old. And their respect for the five elements, earth, air, fire, water, and of course ether, uh, has, has been ingrained in their tradition. Now, I'm not saying we're all Zoroastrians this morning, but it is a kind of, to me, rather sweet link uh, with uh, a formative religion older than Judaism that I think we need to at least acknowledge this morning. Now, there are a whole bunch of good people helping us today. Cameron has already saved my neck by uh, showing me how to turn this thing on. But it wasn't that easy, was it, Cameron? I mean, there, there were little things in there that I had long forgotten. Uh, and uh, I do thank everybody here who has had a hand in helping us at this service. Kim, I see you back there because you've got quite a big role. And thank you for being here. So that's my welcome and introduction. And now, let us say together the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that may be perfect and you. Worthy to magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive, and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We're so lucky to have Michelle with us this morning, who's going to be playing a variety of, of tunes. I even asked her whether we could follow some of them in our hymn books, and uh, she thought that might be possible with at least musical selection, all things bright and beautiful, but otherwise we're here just to hear her beautiful music and help us guide us in our spiritual lives.
Let us say together the collect of the day, which is printed in our book. Let us pray. <coughs> God of eternal history, you will know the heart of our day of service. Grant us understanding of our heart, so that we may choose the five things between the treasures of your promised brain and this world of God's church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Just before Kim reads the first lesson, I have something to say about it. It's from the book of Genesis. It's the story of Jacob. He's a founding figure of our mother religion of Judaism. And our scripture reading concerns Jacob's marriages to Rachel and Leah, the daughters of his uncle, Laban, Laban the Aramean. Now, taken out of its historical context, we have to remind ourselves, these are at least 2,500 years old, these observations. Taken out of that historical context, the story may seem not only bizarre, but a good example of the general subjugation of women in those ancient times. That's important. But the main thing, I suggest, is to reflect again on the distant desert roots of the Judeo-Christian tradition, many of them lost in the mists of history. We are, in a sense, inheritors of this tradition, though, of course, it has gone through many adaptations to an evolving society. It's still a part of our tradition. Thank you. A reading from the book of Genesis. Then Laban said to Jacob, because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you for seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When the morning came, it was Leah, and Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country, given the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban, who gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Now, Kim, before you go on to read Psalm 105 for us, or lead us, let me indicate to everybody here that Psalm 105 reinforces the statue of Jacob as the inheritor of the special covenant between God and Israel. Highly controversial verse or two in here. To you I will give the land of Canaan your portion for your inheritance. As all of you know, Palestinians bitterly resent that. So we see this psalm again as a historical masterpiece. It must mean something spiritually to us as well. But we do keep in mind that these ancient scriptures carry with them a lot of baggage. Please join me in uh, reading Psalm 105, uh, alternate verses. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon the divine name. Make known the deeds of the Lord among the peoples. Sing to the Lord, sing praises, speaking of all the marvelous works of the Lord. Glory in the holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. 
Search for the strength of the Lord, and continually see the face of God. Remember the marvels the Lord has done, the wonders and the judgments of the mouth of the Lord. O offspring of Abraham, servants of God, O children of Jacob, the chosen of the Lord. The Lord is our God, whose judgments prevail in all the world. Who is always to be mindful of the covenant, our God for a thousand generations. The covenant made with Abraham, the oath sworn to Isaac. Established as a strategy for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel. Saying, To you will I give the land of Canaan to be your allotted inheritance. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Shall we stand for the Gospel? The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then, in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the goods into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered yes, and he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of Christ. Grace to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Well, dear friends, I begin my few words with you this morning by noting again what a strange summer, what a strange time we all are going through. For as long as any of us may yet live, we will remember 2020 as a year unlike any we have ever experienced. COVID-19 has seen to that. And although here in Nova Scotia, on the far eastern edge of a continent that elsewhere continues to experience considerable distress with the virus, we have so far, for the most part, been spared. And we wait patiently, like the rest of the world, for the vaccine that is the only known way to end this weary struggle. As last week I was speaking to John Hamm, our former premier, who's a retired physician up here, Stellarton. And he mentioned to me again that until this vaccine is circulated worldwide, COVID-19 will always be here. You think about that. Seven million people. We've got many years to go, not just months, before this virus is uh, eliminated or put to one side of daily life. So we wait patiently, and we know that in the long run we will prevail. And what will be the possible long-term consequences of this worldwide modern plague? Of course, we are told it could be a lot worse 
like the so-called Spanish influenza of 1918, which killed millions of young people, not old people, but young people, because of what is now called a cytokine storm, the overreaction to the, the virus. That said, 2020 is still a crisis of unknown severity and duration, and we will all have to continue to adjust to it scientifically, socially, very much economically, and even spiritually. We do so in the words of St. Words of Saint Paul in his letter to the Romans, waiting to participate for what we do not see, with the help of the Holy Spirit continuing to help us in our weakness, and indeed, our individual spiritual lives are extremely important to us now, even if we live outside the zones of real concern, like Florida or Arizona, to say nothing of Great Britain or Russia and other world hotspots. So we are daily reminded that the coronavirus pandemic has not just threatened the physical health of millions, but also wreaked havoc on the emotional and mental well-being of people around the world. Maybe not so much here, but travel outside of this country and you would certainly see it. In many places, feelings of anxiety, of helplessness, and certain grief are ever present as various parts of human society face an increasingly uncertain future. For example, just last week I read in the New York Times a report that 42% of Americans feel that the virus has negatively affected their mental health. Experts tell us that, mercifully, these statistics don't apply to us here in Canada, well out of the danger zones of COVID-19, especially here in the eastern part, thanks to the initial emergency response of our provincial authorities. But they also tell us that in some crucial ways, the world will never be the same again because of the current crisis. Better prepared, hopefully, for the next inevitable encounter with perhaps something even more deadly. They also suggest that there may be a silver lining in the cloud of current physical and economic destruction. Perhaps in this regard, you may have read comments about a curiously more optimistic perspective, especially vis-a-vis -vis the world of nature. People world over report how the atmosphere now feels more scrubbed clean, as it benefits from, of course, the reduction of pollution. The stars appear much sharper in the evening sky. Far away vistas not seen for half a century are now in view. Birds and wildlife given a freedom that they didn't have six months ago. I noticed this, you know, when I was down at my cabin on Sherbrooke Lake last week. I was sitting there in the afternoon looking up at the sky, and I only saw one plane in three hours. You know, last summer at this time, that sky would have been covered with contrails, with planes coming and going from Europe and other parts of, of the world. And uh, it, it, the, the change is just remarkable. We see it in our daily lives and we look for it. So perhaps COVID-19 has done this for us and maybe it has also contributed to fostering a better relationship between the human community, however you define that, and the natural world. And with that crucial human community in general, far better off at looking after itself in terms of neighborly assistance and the generally acceptance we hopefully all experience of the current necessary rules of engagement, like wearing these masks. In all of this strange but nonetheless somewhat ominous time, we are all the more so able to take comfort in the words of our gospel today, where the evangelist Mark 
sets down that well-known metaphor wherein Jesus says, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth. And yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all trees and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make their nests in its shade. That's a typical example of our Lord's use of the agricultural images of his time. A simple, everyday seed to make a point to a rural crowd that in normal life, faith will be tested many times like a seed planted in the ground. Is it going to make it or not? Will there be enough nutrients? Will there be enough moisture? Will it come forward as a plant? So for us in 2020, world over, COVID-19 is a modest but pertinent example of something that may test or even sideswipe our faith in God's ultimate charity. Perhaps that's to be expected. But through whatever test or trial the virus visits upon us, we keep this in mind. If faith even the size of a mustard seed prevails. We will prevail. These splendid words remind us that faith is a precious but also somewhat fragile commodity, constantly exposed to challenges from a variety of perspectives, intellectual, emotional, the impact of world events, and unanticipated disasters like the one so many parts of the globe are struggling with at this time. And just as we treasure our faith in Christ's saving message, may we remind ourselves that a major part of that message is every effort you and I might make to help others on the way. Through kindness, through acts of caring, however we might want to define that. Amen. An affirmation of faith. We'll say this together. And this, by the way, is the famous Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Elohim Adonai Mekoch. That's Hebrew, but it's here translated for us in the English. And uh, Adonai is the recognized Hebrew word uh, for God. And here, of course, we're really repeating the same thing, but uh, in our translation. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is your God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your heart. This is the first of three commandments. The second is my God. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And Elaine, would you end with the prayer of the time of pandemic? Paul, in his letter to the Roman Christians, spoke of the spirit that intercedes us for us in our weakness. Let us pray together, knowing that God knows and understands what is going through our minds as we pray. Our prayer response will be, Lord of all, hear our prayer. May the Spirit pray through us as we try to put into words the concerns that we have have for the world's peoples as we continue to move through this coronavirus pandemic and the challenges that present themselves now and in the future. People are frightened. People are in need for basics such as food, shelter, and support in difficult situations. Please help us to address these needs with practicality, kindness, and compassion. Lord of all, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for all the advances in medical knowledge and the hope for new treatments for many diseases that have been with us for a long time. 
We pray for all doctors and researchers in their labs as they work hard on new ways to help those in need. We pray for their work on the coronavirus as well and hope that they are able to develop a coronavirus serum that will give us hope to learn to live with it. Lord of all, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for your healing grace for those who are in need. We think of Florence McKee, Marlene and John, Tom, Gloria, Connie, Heidi, Anne, Kathleen, Rob, Don and Betty, Sylvia, Roger, Vange, Tracy, Becca, Kathy, Willie, Brian, Anna Lee, Wyatt, Louisa, Bill, Jerry, Bob, Benjamin, Jean, Robert, Doug and Nancy, Beth, Jean and Betty, Donna, John and Lucy's grandson, and Andrew. Lord of all, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for all who have helped us pray and to grasp something of your great love and power. We ask your blessing and empowering for all who teach and minister in your name, especially Reverend Sa Reverend Sandra, Reverend Bruce, Canon Elliot, Reverend Herbert, and the late Cal McMillan. We also pray for the team responsible for preparing the Lambeth Conference that was supposed to be uh, now, and the implications of its postponement in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for the parishes of Hatchet Lake and Terence Bay, St. John the Evangelist, and St. Francis by the Lakes, both of Sackville. Lord of all, Amen. Father, we thank you for the beauty and the diversity of the created world that we inhabit. We ask for the wisdom to look after it carefully by respecting the natural laws and sharing the resources given to us, listening to the weak as well as the strident voices, the poor as well as the affluent and powerful. We must remember that we only have one planet for all living creatures for now and the future. Lord of all, hear our prayer. Father, we call to mind all those we have known and loved who now have died. We especially think of Della's twin brother, Brian, and George, a close family friend of the Finley family. May they rest in peace. We pray for those who have died unnoticed, but as Reverend Sandra stated, not alone, because you, Lord, are always with us. We ask that they all may know your mercy and everlasting peace. Lord of all, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for your wisdom and truth, your understanding and generosity. We acknowledge our total dependence on you and praise you for providing us with all we need. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, a prayer in a time of pandemic. And this comes from the Diocese of Niagara. Loving God, whose peace passes all our understanding as we face this present pandemic and experience fear and anxiety, may we hear your voice bringing calm to the storms of our times. Strengthen those who work to limit the spread of infection and those who seek to care for the sick. 
and keep us mindful of those most valuable. May we share our living to protect one another and may our changing habits, practices, and sacrifices be for the greater love of our community and all your people. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elaine. So beautifully done. <laughs>
on biblical Hebrew. My gosh, it was hard. <laughs> Very hard. It, went, you know, it required seven hours a day. It went on and on. It was a good, good refresher for me. I've been doing that for a long time. But uh, I found the medium to be very awkward, and uh, somehow we go through it. So, all power to it if you can use Zoom. Uh, anybody else want to add anything here? Record schedule is there for you. I think that probably did pretty well yet. Jose Antonio Carlos de Siaxis. What a wonderful name. Boy, some people are lucky. You're going to play that posture for us. Thank you so much, Michelle, for the day you've done so much for us in the music.